Good evening, good evening everyone. We want to welcome you to our midweek service. Today is the 10th of August 2022 and I want to believe that each and every one of us was able to vote thus exercising our constitutional rights yesterday. I'm so grateful that you can tune in this evening and I'm so grateful that the Lord is giving us peace day after day. As we continue waiting um, for the people who are telling the votes to give us the results, we are here again to look at the word of the Most High God, and we want to thank God so, so much. So if you have someone way at home, someone could be in the kitchen, someone could be in the bedroom or wherever they are, just tag them along and tell them the service has begun, the midweek service at Deliverance Church International Kasarani Zimmerman has begun and we are taking new territories. Invite all of them so that we can join up together and hear the word of the Lord. So karibu sana sana. I wish I could be able to get you so that we could do some high five, but we can do high fives by faith and we thank the almighty God. And so we are going to pray together even as we get into the presence of the Lord and hear what the Lord has to say to us. I want us to take just a short while and worship the King of Kings and thank him because he is a good God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we are grateful this evening, oh God. We are grateful that we are the remnants of this season. We are grateful that you've given us a chance to be alive. We are grateful that King in glory, you've given us a chance to be in your presence at such a time as this. We exalt you, King of Kings. We magnify your name. How we love you, our Father. How we honor and adore you, Jehovah God. We thank you because of your promise, God, that our lives are here in Christ in God and so we can have peace of mind and so Jehovah God we can have joy in our hearts oh God because of the things that you have done and the things that you are yet to do we love you king of glory we give you all praise oh God I want to thank you for every viewer wherever they are watching us from our God be it from the land of Kenya or in the diaspora father I want to pray that you will be with them our God and that Jehovah God the light of your word will illuminate their hearts in the name of Jesus oh God receive praise receive glory oh God even this more this this evening as we listen to your word oh king in glory we invite you sweet holy spirit to come and take charge of this service we invite you sweet holy spirit to continue taking charge of our nation we invite you sweet spirit to continue taking charge of our families in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and we want to thank you precious Lord because we know that in this season you have released to us the grace of progressing in the name of Jesus the grace of taking up new territories in the mighty name of Jesus we give you praise and we give you honor be glorified father and be honored because we pray this in Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen. Karibuni sana. It's great to see all of you online. It's great that you're tuning in because the Bible says in the book of John chapter 6 verses 61 to 63 that the word of the Lord is spirit and the word of the Lord is life. And so today, as we look through the word of God, what in essence we are doing, we are bringing life to ourselves, life to our families, life to our nation, because it's only the word of God that is able to shape. Remember the Bible says in the book of Genesis that God said and it became. He released his word and everything that needed to become, became. And so today, as we release God, God's word, as we speak God's word, as we hear God's word, all situations are going to become the way God would have them become in our dispensation. So karibuni sana sana, karibuni all of us who are watching.
watching from Kenya, all of us who are watching in the diaspora, we love you, we love you, we love you, and we want to thank you. I want to take this opportunity also to thank God for our bishop and our mom who has give, have given us this chance to be able to bring forth the word of God. We pray that God will constantly be giving them strength even as they lead this ministry, and we thank uh, God for them so, so much. At this juncture, we want to um, go back to the word of God. We began on a series in the month of August, and the series is Taking Territories, or if you like, Taking New Territories. And last week, we were looking at what taking new territories is. I'd just like to do a recap, just in case you were not there last week. Briefly, we looked at taking new territories to mean breaking into new frontiers. It also means taking our environments for Christ. It means growing spiritually. It means advancing from one level to another. It means promotion. It means taking new business initiatives in the name of the Lord. And it also means developing business opportunities. And so that's what we are saying in this dispensation. We want to move. We have been in one level for a very long time, but we want to move into new territories in the name of the Lord. We also looked last week at the fact that for us to be able to take those new territories, we must be willing to enlarge our capacities because at times God wants to give us the new territories, but we are not able to get them. Why? Because our capacities are still limited. They are not able to handle the kind of large territories that the Lord would want to give us. And so we agreed and we studied and looked at the fact that that we need to enlarge our capacity. And we looked at ways of enlarging our capacities. We said we will, large, uh, we will enlarge our capacities through prayer. We said we'll enlarge our capacities through studying the word of God, through reading books, inspirational books. And we also said we will be listening and watching the right content. Praise the name of the Lord. And so today we want to look at still taking territories, but what are some of the things that we will need to do after we have enlarged our capacity and God is ready to give us the new territories? How then do we get into the new territories? And I'd like us to go back to our key scripture, which was Numbers chapter 33, verses 50 to 53. Numbers chapter 33, verses 50 to 53. This is what the Bible says. It says, now the Lord spoke to Moses in the plains of Moab by the Jordan, across from Jericho, saying, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, when you have crossed the Jordan into the land of Canaan, then you shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you. Destroy all their engraved stones. Destroy all their molded images. And demolish all their high places. You shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell in it. For I have given you the land to possess. We can also look at scripture in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 3. The Bible says, you have scattered this mountain long enough. Turn northward. You have scattered this mountain long enough. Turn northwards. In other words, what God was telling the Israelites, you have been moving around this mountain because as they started walking in the wilderness, as they were heading towards the promised land, they got into a place where Mount Seir is. And the Bible says that they tarried in that place for very long. And what were they doing? They kept on walking around the mountain for all those years. They were walking, just walking around the mountain. They go to bed, they wake up in the morning, and as they wake up in the morning, they're just walking around the mountain. And now the Lord is coming to tell them, you have walked around this mountain for too long. Now turn north. Turn north. And as we look at how then can we be able to take the new territories, the number one thing that I'd want us to understand is that you need to have a changed perspective. 
your perspective must change. In other words, the way you look at things will need to change. After you've enlarged your capacity, the way you're looking at things must change for you to be able to get into those new territories. In other words, you cannot be able to acquire new territories when you are still excited about being in a crowd. When you are still excited about psychophancy, you cannot get into the new territories. So the first step in changing our perspective is you must step out of the crowd so that you and Jesus will be the majority. It won't matter what the rest of the people are saying, but it will matter what the Lord Jesus tells you to do. So you have to step out of the crowd so that you can hear the Lord Jesus clearly. Remember, when you're inside of the crowd, there's so much noise you'll be hearing. Some of them are murmuring, some are whining, some are laughing, some are shouting. And in the midst of that noise, you may not be able to hear clearly what the Lord Jesus Christ is telling you to do. So you have to step out of the crowd as you change your perspective. And remember, the Bible says you have have scattered and so the the word the key word there is you not us not us no it is you you have scattered this mountain for too long now turn north you is the operative word in the text that we've read in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 3. If you want to get out from doing the same thing over and over again, then it starts with you. It is you who will tell yourself, I cannot do this any longer. It is you who will tell yourself, enough is enough. I have moved around this space for too long. Now, most of us, when we find ourselves in situations that we don't care to be in, we get to a place where we engage in a blame game. We want to blame everyone else but us. We want to complain about our parents who never took us to school. We are complaining about our husbands who are a bit harsh. We are complaining about the employer who is not promoting us. We complain about everyone else. Why? Because it's normally sweet to blame someone else. But we need to understand that if we have to get to the new territories, it will begin with us. Your employer may never change, but you will still need to move out of the crowd so that you can get the new territories. The background that you came from may never change or will never change. It is in the past and it will never change. But you tell yourself, it is me who is alive here. It is me who needs this change desperately. And so I have to move out of this crowd and do what it takes for me to take the new territory. So the real deal is that it is about you. In other words, it's what you think about yourself. Therefore, we have to change the way we think. We have to change our perspective. We have to change the way we are looking at things. Remember, the Israelites were in the wilderness because of their disobedience. God had already spoken and God had already told them there is a promised land. There is a frontier I am giving you. There is a territory where I want you to be in. God had already released it to them. By the time God was bringing them out of Egypt, the promised land had already been set aside for them. But because of disobedience, they kept on walking around Mount Seir. And many times, it's because of our disobedience, because of our fear, that we keep walking round a mountain, round a particular um, area for too long, round a particular situation for too long. Yet God has already spoken. Buonaeso there are times when you need to say because God spoke to me and I had it I am going to take a step of faith I'm going to get into this water so that I can be able to wait a little bit deeper and get to the place that God wants me to be in you know many times as Christians we tell ourselves 
Do you know what? I am waiting on God. I'm waiting on God to come and send a prophet to come and speak to me. I am waiting on God to send sister so and so. She looks like the one who normally hears God better than I do. I want to bring it to us to he- today, ch- child of God, that God has no business gossiping about you with your neighbor. You are his child. And if he wants to speak, he will speak tra- straight to you. So do not wait for someone else to be told about you. He loves you so much that he has already spoken. And so step out and begin walking towards the new territory that the Lord wants you to get into. So change your perspective. It may not be comfortable where God is telling you to get into. But change your perspective. That place that does not look very comfortable could be the place, actually is the place where your blessing is. It's the place where your prosperity is. It's the place where your destiny is. And so step into that water and begin walking towards the direction that God is going to show you. Remember when Abraham was told, leave your people, leave your kinsmen, leave your friends, leave your families to a place that I was going to show you. It was not comfortable at all because this was something that was very new for him. He had already been used to the comfort zone of having friends he had grown up with, having relatives who could at least be able to take care of him. But God was telling him it is time for you to leave all this because there is a new territory that I am commanding you to go and take and that is what God is saying today to us or tonight to us God is telling us that there is a new territory your relatives may not understand it but I know it and I've given it to you as a promise your family may not understand it your friends may not understand it but I want you to arise and go to a place that I've already prepared Prepared with you in mind. Praise the name of the Lord. The second thing that the Lord would have us do is he does not want us to get complacent in the current situation. So number two, don't get complacent in your current situation. Don't get complacent in your current situation. Complacency means to be pleased with oneself or one situation without awareness of some potential dangers. When you become complacent, it means that you have gotten to a place of status quo. You are comfortable with the situation you are in. You are comfortable with who you are at the moment. And therefore, you are not even aware of the dangers, of some uh, some potential dangers that may be existing in that situation where you are. In other words, you are trapped in bondage without even understanding it. You are trapped in bondage without even understanding. The Israelites at some point wanted to be complacent. When they got into the wilderness, the time when they are going around Mansia, they kept thinking about Cucumbers, they kept thinking about onions. And they're like, what, what did Moses do? How could you even bring us out of a land where we were eating onions? A land where we were eating cucumbers. And many times I sit back and think, seriously, these grown men and women, because it was not the children who were crying, the grown men and women, all they could cry about was about the onions and the cucumbers and the like. They did not remember that the Lord has delivered them from slavery. And how many times we get hold on to something and we want to be complacent. We want to be comfortable with those things that we have in our hands. Yet the Lord is saying, let it go because I have something better for you. I have a new territory that is way much better for you. It is time for us to stop being complacent. It is time for us to let go of the old situation we have been in for a better territory that the Lord is giving to us. Praise the name of the Lord. I imagine some of the children of Israel thought it was normal when they were deal- what they were dealing with until when God stopped them. You know, they thought it was normal. The Israelites, as they woke up every morning, they went round Mount Seir. 
they were seeing the same rock formations. They were seeing the same trees they saw yesterday. They were seeing the same soil that they were seeing. They were seeing the same vegetation day in, day out. Every day they went to sleep, they woke up and they started walking around Mount Seir, walking around. And you know, you and I in this dispensation may think, oh, how crude, how creepy. Were they not wise enough? But you know what? That's exactly what many times we do. We go round in circles, round in the same place. Yet the Lord is saying, there is a new place that I'm giving to you. There's a new territory that I'm giving to you. But you're saying, oh, no, no, God. I have never been to that territory. So just allow me to walk around this place. Yes, just allow me to walk around this place. It could be in a job. The Lord is telling you, make applications because it is time for me to promote you. But you're saying, no, I am not so conversant with what I'm going to find out there with my new employer. Let me just be here. In fact, to even tell ourselves, better the devil you know than the angel you do not know. I want to bring it to you. That is the same thing that the Israelites were doing during that time. They were busy walking, busy every day as they woke up. They were busy Walk, they were so busy doing something, but that thing was not adding up to anything of value. They were always in motion, day in, day out, always in motion. My, my imagination is thinking, if they had shoes, then the, the shoes kept on being worn out underneath. The soles of the shoes were being worn out. Why? Because they kept walking, walking around the mountain, but yet they were not making progress. It is time for us to allow God to make our motion be translated into progress. As we wake up every morning, you tell the Lord, today, let that which I will do make sense. Let that which I will do bring progress in my life. For the Israelites, nothing was making sense. Nothing was bringing progress. And many times after they had walked around the mountain for so long, by the time they were retiring to their tent, going to sleep, they were like, ouch, I am tired. My back is aching. You know, oh, my knees are painful. Why? Because they had walked the whole day. But what had they done? They were just going around the same mountain through and through without any meaningful progress that was coming in their way. The text in Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 3 says, you have circled this mountain. You have scattered this mountain for long enough. For long enough. The word circled or scattered in this text in the original language is sabab which means compassed, hoover around, marching around, or closing the loop. Simply put, you have been going round in circles. But the Lord is saying, today, the 10th of August, I am ready to give you new territories if you will trust in me. I am ready to give you new territories. You've been seeing the same over and over, but if you will allow me to hold your hands, I am ready to give you new territories. I know you're tired. I know you're worn out. I know your legs are even swollen because of the way that you've been walking through and through and making no progress, but that is enough now. Come my way. Come my way. Walk with me, and I'm going to give you new territories. That's what the Lord is saying. We have gone around so much. Maybe it's in business. We have tried doing that business. One business, it collapses. The other one, it collapses. This time round, before you get into the next business, please involve the Lord Jesus Christ. Ask him for wisdom because he is wisdom in himself. Ask him for wisdom so that he can walk through with you. He will cause you to break camp so that he can take you to the new territories. He will stop the drama in your life so that you can start getting into the new territories that he is talking about. We must say no to status quo. We must say enough is enough. I am not going to settle for this kind of low living. 
I am not settling. We must say that we are not going to be familiar with our circumstances. We are going to move to the next place that the Lord would have us move. We must come to a point where we are going to say that our motion must result into progress. Our motion must result into progress. Number three, as we take our territories, is that we must be willing to connect to our purpose. Number three, connect to your purpose. Connect to your purpose. The scripture we have read in Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 3, you have circled this mountain long enough. Now in order for us to stop circling mountains for that long, then we must connect to our purpose. You know, when you're circling around um, a place for too long, it means you're living a purposeless life. Your life is without purpose. And a few weeks ago, I was talking to a young man who told me, you know what? Something has changed in my life. I don't know whether I'm the one with problem. I was asking, what makes you think you have problems? He was saying, you know what? I am getting busier and busier. I can no longer just flow with people when they're telling me 20 and you pack your things and you go. I'm finding myself busy and busy. And you know what? That is the kind of life we need to live. It's not the life of someone comes and tells you, take me to this place. And you're like, yes, let's go to that place. Oh, today we are going to you to visit who? No, 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 no. You must connect to your purpose. And a person who is living a purposeful life has a plan on a daily basis. When you wake up in the morning, you know what the day entails. You are not just flowing with life. You know what the day entails. You have pl a planned day. You know what each hour or each minute is worth. And so nobody will just come and disrupt your program because you have already planned for it. So connect to your purpose. Connect to your purpose. Your purpose is finding your lane in life and driving hard in it. But don't get out of your lane. When you're out of your lane, you will cause an accident. I'll repeat. Your purpose is where you've been able to find your lane. And once you are able to find your lane, you start driving hard and fast on your lane. Don't get into someone else's lane. Miles Munro used to say this, and he's written it in several of his books. He says, the greatest tragedy in life is not death. The greatest tragedy is living a life without a purpose. Living a life that is purposeless. That is the greatest tragedy. And once upon a time, uh, there was an issue where the blacks and the whites were fighting in the U.S. during the time of Martin Luther King. And so there were battles and the black man was really, really being frustrated. And so one time during one of the, uh, the scenes or one of the um, incidences, there was a, a white man who was chasing after a black man. And the black man ran and went up a hill. And by the time he was going down the hill, the white man was just about to catch up with him. And so the white man cocked his gun and was just about to shoot the black man. But before shooting the black man, the black man turned and looked at the white man and told the white man, you know what, sir? At least I have a purpose to die. What purpose is there for you to live for? And immediately he was shot and he died. He had a purpose to die for. But this white man did not have a purpose to live for. As we continue living in this life, we must be willing to find our purpose, the purpose of our lives. We are not just living uh, like the life of Simon Maconde. Simon Maconde, in the olden school, in school days, when I was in primary school, we studied about Simon Maconde. And Maconde was born on a Monday. I don't know, he did what on a Tuesday, was married someday during the week. And his life is just seven days, only seven days old. He did, he did, he did, and then he died. There's nothing of worth. There is no legacy that he was able to leave behind. My brother, my sister, 
we should look for our purpose and not live the life like that one of Simon Makonde. Find your purpose. And after you found your purpose, it will help you find your lane and drive hard right inside your lane. Do not get into someone else's lane. How many, how do we get into people's lanes? You look at brother so-and-so and you realize they are prospering as they are selling cars. And so you decide you are also going to start selling cars. Yet that was not your purpose. Or you look at sister so-and-so. You discover they are pursuing this career in medicine. And you decide because sister so-and-so is flourishing in that line. I am also going to flourish in that line. No, 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 no. Ask God for your own purpose because each and every one of us was created for a purpose. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 that I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. The Lord knew you my brother, the Lord knew you my sister and it was way before you were formed in your mother's womb. He had already set out a purpose for you even before you were formed in your mother's womb. And so if you want to know your purpose, go back to the Lord and ask him. Ask him, Father, for what purpose was I created? He will be able to give it to you and you will be able to flourish in that purpose in the name of the Lord. So do not be in someone else's lane. Many times we find ourselves are fighting over battles that are not worth fighting. Why? Because we have crossed into people's lanes. You know, you have crossed into someone else's lane and so you are not getting fulfilled. You find yourself constantly in battles, battles that are not sensible, battles that are not yielding anything because it's not all battles that are worth fighting. So keep to your lane. Keep to your lane. We don't know our purpose. Therefore, many times when we don't know our purposes, we operate like the children of Israel who are just going through life aimlessly without any progress and being unfulfilled because they were not connected to their purpose. For us to have a fulfillment in life, we must be connected to our purpose. You know the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7 verse 7, knock and the door shall be open. Seek and you shall find. Ask, and you'll receive the answer. So ask God to tell you your purpose. He will show you what your purpose is. For the Israelites, though they walked around the mountain, day in, day out, they were tired. Their feet were tired. They were in motion. They did not know their purpose, yet their purpose was to possess the promised land. The land that they had been told was full of milk and honey. And many times, the territories that the Lord is telling us to acquire, those places that we are afraid of going to, are those territories that are full of milk and honey in our situation. Those are the territories that the Lord is telling us. He is telling us, stop marching on the same spot. I want to take you to a new territory. That territory has milk. It has honey. It has all the fruits. It has all the goodies. But you know what? We are still holding on. We are still holding on to the bone. We do not want to go and be given the beef or the meat, the steak that the Lord wants to give us in the new territory. The Israelites were Purpose was to possess the land, the land that was flowing with milk and honey. To possess is not a passive word. Praise the name of the Lord. When you look at the word possess, the Israelites were to possess the land. Possess is not a passive word. Possess is an active word. In other words, they had to take it. It was going to require work. However, they disobeyed and paid the penalty. When you are not operating in your purpose, you are disobedient and you will pay the penalty. When the Lord says, I want you to possess new territories, it will not be a walk in the park. 
No, 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 no. It can never be a walk in the park. It will require work. It will require hard work. In other words, for you to move from a low place to a place that is high requires energy. It requires work. For the Israelites to possess that land, they needed to work. They needed to drive the inhabitants of that land out. They needed to break down the molten images. They needed to break down the high places. It was work because possess is an active word. It is a verb. It's a doing word. It means you have to get in and do something about it. You've been long here now. It's time to connect in your purpose. Your purpose is not to die in the wilderness, but your purpose is to prosper in the promised land. My brother, my sister, as you watch me today, even as we await for the announcement of who is the new president of Kenya, I want you to know that apart from electing a new president and celebrating, you too have a purpose. His purpose, the one who will be the president, will be to lead this nation. But what is your purpose as a lady? What is your purpose as a brother? What is your purpose as a believer? Your purpose is not to die in the wilderness. We have been complaining. Prices have gone high. It's like we are going through a wilderness. But our purpose, believers, is not to die in the wilderness. Our purpose is to prosper in the land. And so arise and stop dilly-dallying. Arise and stop dilly-dallying. Let's go for it. Let's go and conquer our territory in Jesus' name. Finally, after you've connected to your purpose, we need to get to a point where we are able to celebrate. We celebrate small breakthroughs. We celebrate. As I come to an end, as I come to an end, I want us to know that God will give us victories when we start moving. Some of the victories will be smaller. Some will be looking so minute. It's like you're really wondering, is this thing worth celebrating? But as you celebrate, it's like you're pumping more energy to yourself to get to the highest heights. I'm reminded of the times when people go to climb Mount Kenya and we have different summits in Mount Kenya. When they get to the first summit, they tarry there a little while and they celebrate. They encourage themselves. Why? Because God has given them grace. They've been able to walk up to the first summit. But that is not normally the last point. You again gather strength after you have celebrated and you have given yourself a part in the back because nobody else will come and give you a part in the back. You have to encourage yourself in the Lord. If you desperately need a part on the back, then you better part yourself on that back so that after you've patted yourself on the back and you've been encouraged enough in the Lord, you're telling yourself, my main purpose was to possess a new territory. I'm not, oh, I'm not there yet. I have gone quarter way. I still have three quarters to cover. Now I can go to the next place, will be, which will be halfway. And you move to that next place. Definitely, when you look behind, you'll realize you are not as low as you were before you started. So you keep moving and celebrating. You keep moving and celebrating. You keep moving and celebrating yourself until you will be able to get to that promised land. Each one of us has a promised land. For some of us, the promised land is concerning our careers. Some of land, the promised land is concerning our businesses. There are those of us, the promised land is concerning growing spiritually. But each one of us has a promised land. Oh, how I pray that today you will decide to break camp. That today you will hear the word of the Lord when he is saying, you have gone round this mountain for too long. You will hear the word of the Lord and you'll be able to start 
moving in the name of the Lord. I want you to just, wherever you are, as you bow your head, we want to pray. And I want to go back to the things that we are going to do. I said, number one, you have to change your perspective. Change the way you think. Change the way you look at things. Change your spectacles. In other words, change your lenses. You know, if you wear green lenses, everything will appear green. If you wear red lenses, everything will appear red. But I want you to now pick the lens of the Father, the lens of the kingdom. Wear them in your eyes and start seeing things the way God sees them. Change your perspective. Number two, don't get complacent in your current situation. Do not be comfortable. Refuse to be comforted. There are people who will come your way and they'll want you to think it is okay what you're going through. No, 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 it is not okay because it is you feeling the pinch. It is not them feeling the pinch. Hannah of old refused to be comforted. You, my brother, my sister today, refuse to be comforted. Number three, connect to your purpose. Connect to your purpose. Connect to your purpose. Remember we said, find your lane, then drive hard on that lane. Do not let anyone derail you once you find your lane. Because the greatest tra tragedy I said was to live a life or is to live a life that is purposeless. Find your purpose. And ultimately, learn to celebrate small breakthroughs as you are headed. Abraham learned to celebrate the small breakthroughs by building altars in every place where he was. Learn to celebrate breakthroughs. Raise altars at your every point of elevation as you move and celebrate. Give yourself a pat on the back because nobody will come to give it to you. But take action and move today in the name of the Lord. Father, we give you praise. We want to thank you, Jesus, because of this word that you're speaking to us. Lord, we want to thank you that each and every one of us has a promised land. Jehovah, I want to pray for my brothers and sisters, those who have tarried in particular areas, round certain mountains, mountains of challenges, God. Yes, my father, they have been there five years, 10 years, 11 years, 30 years, until they are almost feeling that this is a part of their lives. They are not seeing anything wrong with it. Father, I want to pray that you're going to stir it in their hearts, our father, to know that there's a place where you are prepared new territories for them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you're going to cause their hearts to be so agitated that they will want to act upon your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, we give you praise and we give you honor. As we get into the new territories, we thank you, Lord, because you've released grace. Grace upon every brother. Grace upon every sister. Grace upon every child. You're taking us to new territories which are found in places that are way higher, elevated places, more than the places where we have been. We thank you, Jesus, and we worship you this day. Receive all glory and receive all honor because we pray this in Jesus' matchless name. Amen and amen. And may the Lord bless all of you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Such a word. And what my take home is, it's okay to not be comforted. Don't be comfortable with where you are, but make an effort to move forward, yeah? So it's time to give. Our MPESA pay bill is 86 the account number is the purpose of your payment, all right? 864231, account is the purpose of your payment. So as you give, I will give us a few announcements. Yeah, it's there on the screen. So we have 
the YBS Youth Bible Study on Friday, right here at the main cathedral, DCIKZ, from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. at Tyrannus Hall. That is for the young people, we have the Youth Bible Study on Friday. Sawa? All right. And then our medical clinic is open. It's up and running. It has been for a while now. So please feel free to give us a visit. The, the clinic is open from 8 a.m. to 5 to 6 p.m. every day. 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. So visit us. Pass by. We are open. And then on Sunday, we have two services here at the main cathedral, DCIKZ. First service is from 7.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. Second service, which has interpretation, is from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., 12 noon. And then at Shiloh Worship Center, Pale Mirema Drive, we have two services as well, 7.30 a.m. to 9 a.m., that's the youth service, and then 10 a.m. to 12 noon, that's the second service, that is Shiloh Worship Center. Please pick a service, know the changes, and let's fellowship together. And then seed planting for Shiloh is still on. We are going on till the 12th of September, which will be on a Monday. The MPESA pay bill for the Shiloh Worship Center seed planting is 400 to 100, all right? The MPESA pay bill for Shiloh seed planting is 400 to 100. The account is 420 26, all right? Pay bill is 400 to 100. Um, account is 400 20, 26. That is for the Shiloh seed planting, which will go on until Monday, the 12th of September. And then we have worship night this coming Friday. It will be the 12th. We have Ibada worship night. It will be at the Shiloh Worship Center, Mirema Campus, which is also a campus of DCIKZ. So on Friday, we will meet at Shiloh Worship Center for the Ibada worship night. Sawa? From 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Good. And then for the young people, we have the youth dinner. It's coming up on the 26th of this month. So Friday, the 26th of this month, we'll be having the youth dinner uh, from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. So it will be the whole night. We're going to have a great time. Young people, uh, dinner, 26th of this month. And then the Sisters of Grace meeting will be on Sunday, the 21st of this month. Sisters of Grace, the 21st of this month, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then we have the memo, August edition, which will also be on the 21st of this month. The speaker will be Pastor Stephen Jeroge Solomon, and he'll be talking about meaningful relationships for mutual benefits. All the men, please plan to attend. So we've come to the end of our service today. Thank you so much for tuning in and being with us throughout until now. Um, yeah, so let's pray for the giving as we conclude. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for providing for us throughout that we've been able to give back to you through our offering. I pray, God, that you will continue to provide for us because we know that you are our provider. Thank you even for allowing us to be here to connect, to fellowship together, and to listen to your word this Wednesday. As we um, go about our week, God, be with us, protect us, guide us, and lead us. In Jesus' name, amen. So you are my neighbor as we see the grace. So now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and your family now and forevermore. Amen. See you Sunday.